All right. Shalom, shalom. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Um, got something I want you to, to share with you, uh, with you all. And by the way, if you've been messaging me, emailing me, or trying to text me, I can't get them right now, you guys, because I am deep in Tennessee. I was asked to come up here after my car was was fixed to speak at Sukkot in uh, Tennessee. So I'm here now. It's not really a good reception, and my phone's not even working right now. So, but I do have something I want to share with you. And um, can you handle the truth? I mean, really, can you handle the truth? Because there's a lot of deception going on right now in in the United States. And I believe the, the 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 Father is speaking to me, and He's giving me a message. But then there are others who are claiming the same thing, and it's two different messages. Somebody's wrong. Somebody is wrong. Okay. I got a brother I want to introduce you to. His name is Steve Cochran. Steve has been on YouTube for a few years now, and uh, I'm one of his subscribers. He's also been battling uh, cancer, and and Yah has almost beat that thing back uh, in, in a an amazing way in him. Um, but he's got a heavy message, too. I've noticed and I appreciate you, Steve, uh, for, for taking up the, the time that you had to put all this together. I feel you, brother. And and to monitor and to follow some of these ones, because somebody's got to do it, you guys. A watchman somewhere has to warn the people. You understand? I appreciate the efforts of Steve Cocker. Let me introduce you to Steve, and uh, we will go for there. I do have codes for you guys that I've been working on, but I don't think you can handle them unless you you get this message from Steve and understand why you need to understand why Yah is about to do what he's about to do in this country. You need to know why. And, and, and this is one of the reasons right here. Okay. So let me introduce you to Steve. Uh, hang tight. Steve's a good man. That brother lives in uh, Colorado. He's a good brother. Here's what he's got to say. And I'm going to check in with you in just a few minutes. What the prophets are saying regarding the upcoming election and what we can expect to happen with America. You're going to want to hear what they're saying regarding America, what they're saying we should expect this coming election. Now, before I get started with that, I want to say one thing. Yes, it's taken me a long time to get here. This video, j just editing, is insane. You're going to find out there's so much information here. I'm only going to show you about 10 to 50% of the data I've compiled. It's just we would be here hours and hours. So I'm sticking with the people who you watch and I deem to be relevant. Other than that, you're going to be saying, I, f I forgot somebody or I should have mentioned. You weren't showing up if you're watching somebody else in my analytics my youtube analytics by the way everyone that he talks about in this video is confirmed okay I, i've looked them up in the codes and i wouldn't be putting this out this message out and being lockstep and in agreement with steve cochran if that was not the case i have been sick mind you i'm barely here right now i need and covet your prayers i will be going to getting labs done i believe probably tomorrow um i need your prayers folks uh, I've just been, so I've been trying to get here to the studio the last several days and I've just not been capable of doing it. So please bear with me. However, cancer is not returned. It simply affects from chemo. At least that's what we're, where we're hoping, but there's no cancer or anything. God, thank God, according to your help and your prayers. And I'm coveting them now, your support as well. Thank you for every folks. I want to thank you for everybody who supports this ministry one way or the other. Couldn't do it without you. Let's get started. <clears throat> Let me show you, over the last year, these people, just a handful of them, probably the most popular, though, that you're aware of, what they've been saying we can expect this coming election. You you were very adamant that Trump would serve a second term. You were on record. And and we, we love that you don't back off of those things. It's not like you've said, well, that was misinterpreted or you have to understand the nuance. Mark Taylor, ladies right. and you, gentlemen. You, you've stuck by it. And and everyone wants to know, are you still standing by that? Do you still see a second term coming? Yep. It, what, what do you – go ahead. Doors wide yep. open. Tell us yep. what yep. you see for a second term for Trump. I, I think Trump's coming back, I uh, whether it's, you know, before 2024. And then I heard Donald Trump will be in power once more. And then I heard he will reign again. And I think – I predict – that's it. We will have 
four more years of a Trump presidency, and he will drain the swamp as a result. There's going to be a new rebirth of freedom in America because of this corruption now being revealed to all of America. That, uh, it's, it's, it's a done thing. Uh, you know, it's a done deal that uh, President Trump is back in office and, and we are fixing to have uh, a highway, a highway of uh, great revival. No matter what the enemy tries to do, Donald Trump will get back in because God wants that. Do you believe it? Yes. Ho oh, ha. Occur. Righteous and rightful leaders like Donald Trump but not just Donald Trump, will be restored to their rightful positions. Ho, ha, ho. You'll also be thankful in noting what these people, in fact, I'm going to add some extras who you watch, what they say we should expect regarding America. God is restructuring and he's reshaping things. And there's nothing Satan can do about that because our prayers are releasing the glory of God, the power of God, the lightning of God to strike and again, that is the word intercession. So they can cry misinformation all they want, but God's going around them and he's restructuring things in this nation for the good. This is the word of the Lord to America. Things are changing. The weather is changing. The harsh season is about to come to an end. America is being saved. Do you really believe since the spirit of the living God in this time that I, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of angel armies, the Lord war shall lose a battle against defeated entities who think that they can take my America from me and from the remnant of those who stand at this time. And this that runs through your courts, the injustice, is not the way of your future. For I, the God of righteousness and justice, have come at this time to restore order and justice in this land. God. Now, folks, I want to believe. I don't think these men are, are uh, evil. I, I really don't, you guys. I, I think that they follow after their own ima imagination and they want to believe what they are saying. But they are not hearing from the Most High. And uh, you, you're going to see that in this. This brother has put together a, a really good compilation of contradictions in some of the things that they have said and backtracking and gaslighting and doubling down and all these things that they are doing right now. Yah's going to deal with it. Deal with them first is not forgotten this country and no, we yes. have to speak right and stay out of fear and stay in faith because we are on That's a right. great ride and we're also getting ready for a great celebration for i am that i am and i say this land will not be stolen this land will not be trashed this land will not be diseased this land will not have crime and wickedness in it i say the righteousness, justice, and freedom was born in this land, will remain in this land, and I say get ready for the glory of God to flood. Notice how she's draped her. You'll see this in what is called the Christian Nationals. I don't know if you noticed on the last two gentlemen that were on, they had American flags on their lapel. This is a thing. Uh, what the fathers told me is these are not my prophets. Their heart's in the wrong place this earth to flood this america america the beautiful america who loves you hear this it's all about america it's all about vindicating the prophets hank kuhneman said that that this next election will be vindicating the prophets and vindicating donald trump he said that folks vindicating the prophets America who holds his arms open for the lost. America who helps. America the beautiful, made as a gift from myself. For I say, no one or nothing will stop it from happening. And nothing ends until I say it ends. So get your crown on and get ready to rule and reign with my son, Jesus Christ, because it will happen. Celebration will be in the streets. Eat cake and celebrate says your god so god's saying not only will those that had their feet stolen from them 
receive their just due, but those that they were appointed to rule will receive their just due. When Donald Trump gets back in, you can kind of read between the lines, what is God saying? We're going to be blessed. And God's saying this is going to happen again. When those righteous rulers are put back in their positions, Donald Trump, yes, but not just him, then he said, my people are not going to groan anymore. My people are going to rejoice and going to live blessed. He said, there will be great celebrations in the streets. Ah! <laughs> oh, didn't he say those that have been unjustly accused, like Donald Trump and those in January 6th and many others, are going to be vindicated. Oh, ha, I'm going to declare them innocent. Oh, ha, ha, for all to see. Oh, so this is what he's told me back in 2023. This is what I'm going to be doing in 2024. It was burned into my heart standing there where the Spirit of the Lord began to say, I sent you as an ambassador of America to this location where I began again. And we stood at the altar of Noah where they saw the rainbow, where they sacrificed for the first time. And we were crying wow. because of that moment. And when we stood there, I realized God is going to rescue America. I shortly after that was in prayer, had a vision of a newspaper article that came in front of my eyes. And I saw the headline, God saved America. But it's going to be at great cost, and we're going to go through a season, but there will be a redemptive scenario at the end of this cycle. This is I saw the words. Now, I do agree with that to some point. There will be a redemptive season in this. But the way he's saying God will save America and doing this by putting Donald Trump in, in the office is not the way we're going to be saved. It is not. In fact, this country is going through the threshing floor or the furnace of affliction. They're, they're both the same, by the way, the same thing. God saved America. God saved America. And I believe this is that word about the new America backwards. And it was like a newspaper headline that said, God saved America. God has saved America. God has saved America to the point that everybody involved in it would, would have to say, only God could have saved America. It was only him that could do it. God saved America. It's going to be new. It's going to be uh, filled with difficulty. But I believe we have another round. These are prophecies that have been going on for a while. The ones I just showed you were over just the last year. However, one person I noted, and it's and, and it's not it's not just one, but one has blatantly flipped. I mean, done literally a 180. Now, I think Steve's misunderstanding what what this is about. Uh, Hank Kuhneman has not done a 180. He's added to what he's already said. And this is what he, this, and I know this because I've been following uh, Hank Kuhneman intently uh, at nausea. Okay. He has prophesied that Donald Trump, first of all, he had prophesied a lot of things that did not happen. He was on Sid Roth and prophesied when COVID was hitting, saying that COVID wasn't going to be in this country and that this next year, back then he said this, this next year, stadiums would be full of people with revival flooding this land. That never happened. We went through the hardest season uh, ever uh, as, as a people, I think, with this plague that was upon us. So it did not happen. But in this case... He is prophesying, and, and I, I really believe the man watches a lot of news, and he gleans what he thinks is going to happen from the news, because Nikki Haley was on the scene, all right? This is before Nikki Haley and Donald Trump had a falling out. This man, and I know he was talking about Nikki Haley and not Tulsi Gabbard, is because he put Nikki Haley in the thumbnail of the original video of, of, of this prophecy right here. Then later, when Nikki Haley was not picked as a running mate, because it wasn't his prophecy wasn't happening like he was hoping it would. 
Tulsi Gabbard came on board with Donald Trump, and then he switched it to say Tulsi Gabbard was the one that was uh, going to be the woman to rise up. But you know what y'all told me? Especially this guy right here, that he is going to turn every word that they say back on them. Oh, yeah, their words will be prophecies, but exactly the opposite of what he is saying. In your politics, I've already anointed... I've already appointed a woman who shall arise. You already see her. You know who she is. You say, oh God, but we have one as vice president. No, you do not. Oh, but we have one already as vice president. See, he was prophesying that Nikki Haley was going to be the vice president to Donald Trump. And that didn't happen. In fact... Nikki Haley became an enemy of sorts and went over to the Democrats. But then Tulsi Gabbard came along, and then he switched it to Tulsi. Do not make me laugh. What you have is counterfeit. What I speak of shall be the real. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that's a little concerning. What happened with God saying Trump would come back with now, God is now saying a woman's going to be in the White House. And listen to me, this is just one incident of apparently things are kind of starting to change now, whereas before earlier prophecies were, were everything was fine. Now things apparently are becoming a little muddy and things are changing with some of these people. And I have kind of concluded what I saw Perry Stone say one time. It seems today that everybody that thinks they've heard from God is now a YouTube prophet. And they come on, thus saith the Lord, urgent prophecy, something big will happen this month. And then when that happens, well, this is what God told Yeah, something big gonna happen this morning or, or this month, right? Hank Kuhneman does that all the time. There's a great shaking coming, right? And then if an earthquake happens somewhere, he says, and I would, that was what I was talking about right there, right? That's not prophecy, folks. That's smoke and mirrors. Told me. Anybody, I can get on here and say, guess what? In the month of March or April, something big is going to happen. And then I'll come along and an earthquake happens. I told you that was going to happen. This is the word. These are the same people that I'm showing you, who I talked about back in 2020, now, even go back farther, before 2020, 2019, and so forth, these people I have done a montage on at one time to where they were saying Trump would be elected. Trump's going to be, I, I, I was on television at one point taking other television ministers' prophecies saying the same thing. What's my question to you? <clears throat> Excuse me. What has happened since then? In other words, why were they, they were wrong, they were wrong, why were they wrong then, but are right now? Let me just take it one step further, Steve. Why were they misinformed about it in the first place? Why did not the father tell them that Donald Trump was not going to be in there because of, you know, the shenanigans? Why did he leave that out? Because not one, none of them, not one prophesied there was going to be some shenanigans in this election. However, if you recall in the last cycle, the week of the election, y'all cleared me to bring a word to you, and it was exactly spot on. I told you exactly what was going to happen, the word that came from the Father, the codes that it revealed to me, spot on. And against a lot of people who were wanting to throw stones at me and, and make me an outcast because I was going against the norm for the Christian nationalist. Y'all's doing something here. You remember what he told me and what I said to you? Lo ex ba echat. Not one finger will I lift to stop what is going to happen. Don't you know the Bible says that the father is the one who raises up and takes kings away? He is not caught off guard. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. And he's exposing these very ones. You may get angry. You may get angry watching this video. 
and angry at me. But that will go away when you see the truth. He said, lo exba echat. I will not lift one finger. Why? Because he's already lifted his hand off this nation. He is allowing this nation to be threshed. And he's starting with the house of God. That's what the word says. When judgment comes, it comes to the leaders of the church. It comes to the prophets who are misleading the people. And it's coming to the pastors who don't stand up and call these people out, who keep inviting them back to their churches and deceiving the people. That's who Yah is dealing with first. Remember that. You understand what I'm saying? If they were wrong then, my question to you, why are they correct now? And, I, and I've and i been in, in, in a deep mode of prayer with Yah about putting me out there 100 days before the election and putting this information out. I said, Father, I'm going to do this because I have faith and I trust in you and your word. And I believe you speak to me, even though you don't speak to me every day and give me a prophetic word every day, like some of these people. And, and that's the way, uh, in my experience, he usually is still small voice. And I have to pursue him. He doesn't pursue me and give me a word every day, knocking on my door. I got a word for you to give the people. No, he don't. I pursue him. And sometimes he don't answer. Until I pursue him with all of my heart. And then he will answer. How are, how are these men and women hearing, and some of them even go to heaven on a daily basis and plays checkers with Jesus, and yet they're wrong every time they open their mouth? Mario Murillo is one of the only ones I've seen that was in that camp that walked away from it. He's the only one what's happening to Christians. They are literally leaving their Bible, having out of Bible experiences mm -hmm. and trusting in prophets that will give them a daily word. And they're wrong. And he, here's the most dangerous part, Alan. These prophets make predictions that do not come true. And everyone just sweeps it under the carpet and moves on. And they don't discern or evaluate. Let's say code search is wrong about this. You think they're going to sweep it under the, uh, under the carpet? i got haters who are waiting for me to fall on my face on this channel right now. And if I'm wrong about this, they're going to be the first ones to be making videos about the code searcher. So I'm very aware of that. I'm very aware. Yet my faith has not wavered because I trust in the Father. Okay? So I, I, I'm, I'm with them on this. They do sweep it under the rug. Sometimes they even delete and and remove millions of views off their channel, de deleting the, the, the false prophecies that you can't find them. You can't, unless you record it, you can't go back to their channel and find it. And this is dozens of channels. Deleting, deleting, deleting millions of views of prophecies that did not come true so that they could save yourself. You're about to see one of them here in a minute. His name is Emmanuel. He thought all these uh, things were were... Uh, erased, and he makes a statement, and Cochran is able to find a video of him saying exactly, so he's lying to your face on camera. And they don't realize all of the things they need are in the Word of God. Come the on. Bible will tell them yes. what they need to do with their life. And when you ask God to talk to you, I, I'm going to tell you about God for a second. Go ahead. If you If you say, God, speak to me, he won't if you're not reading your Bible hmm. because he's not going to reinforce the habit of you getting direct impressions from God without knowing the word of God. I'm going to take it a little step further, Mario. He is not going to confirm and he's not going to and he's not going to uh, vindicate. False prophets in this next election just because they are doubling down. And coming up with new stuff. He's not going to vindicate them. He is going to do something. Now, l let me not be too critical here, but you have a lot of YouTube prophets. And what they really are are non-prophets. <laughs> because when you tell me God told you something's going to happen on a date and it don't happen, you missed it and you need to repent. Because you better be glad we're not in the Old Testament because you keep missing it. They're going to stone you for missing it.
and going to label you a false prophet. But these guys just get by with it and they'll say, oh, God changed his mind. Admittedly, I'm trying to give you other people. So it's not always just me telling you what I think. I want you to have some wisdom from other people. By the way, Mario Murillo, who you're going to see in some of these videos, he has since separated himself from these people. I will use him a little bit more soon, but I wanted you to know he has openly come out and renounced some things. And I know you're thinking, uh, you know, I'd, that's not I don't a, know, Steve. That's not an easy thing to do, by the way. And I commend Mario for doing that. When you're wrong, you you admit that you're wrong and you be a man about it. You don't sweep it under the rug. You deal with it. You repent for it. These people said they had it correct. Listen to me. I know some of you have been hearing. I want to post you the question again. These people, I need you to realize, the last election, they never, from what I have seen, except with a little handful, none of them came out and said they had it wrong. In fact, they were saying they were correct and God's word was fulfilled. Trump has legally won the election and he is the president of the United States for four more years. I was taken forward in time. I saw that happen. Justice will be given and Trump will be put in the White House for four more years. It may take a couple weeks. It can take a couple months. This moment in time, in reality, in the Let's just be really clear to what Kat Kerr was telling you there. For the past four years of Joe Biden being in the office, she was telling you, oh, no, they're going to overturn this. The courts are going to overturn this. The very same ones that have been trying to put Trump in jail, they're going to overturn this, and he's coming back. Okay, look what she's saying in 2021. She's not talking about 2024, folks. She's, she's been telling people for the past four years, Donald Trump is the real president. And he's going to be put back in the White House in this season, not 2024. Donald J. Trump is our president right now. Is our president right now in 2021. Say, well, you need to pray for the president. Yes, Donald Trump, pray for him. You can pray for the office of the president. You can pray for a man named Joe Biden, but you cannot pray for President Joe Biden. Because there's no such man. So apparently, Joe Biden in the White House in 2021, he's not president. Folks, it is the father who lifts up and raises kings and takes kings out. You think he was caught off guard? You think because they did some shenanigans that he was somehow caught off guard and, and, and his word was, was just delayed for a season? He doesn't exist, and he knows he don't exist. To all of those who said that we as prophets missed it when we prophesied that Donald Trump would be voted back in a second term, you're wrong. <laughs> we did prophesy that he would be voted back in, and he was voted back in by almost 80 million votes. And in the eyes of God, the president of the United States right now in the courts of justice in heaven is not Joe Biden, but it's Donald Trump. Now, whether he's in the. Folks, the Bible says what's done on, uh, in heaven will be done in earth. So if Donald Trump is president in, in heaven, don't you know he would be president now? Does that make any sense to what this man just said to you? the office or not doesn't matter but prophecy had to be fulfilled and so God fulfilled the prophetic word and so whether you occupy it in the physical sense or not does not matter what matters is did God say it and did God do it and he did and uh, I told my church I said Biden is not president in heaven when you own a car your deeds on that title, your name's on that title. Somebody steals that car. The law doesn't recognize the thief as the owner of the car. He recognizes whose name's on that title. It was stolen. And God does not honor a thief. Now, I know some of you have been hearing, because I know you watch these people, you're aware of this is what they said. They had it correct. 
They went so far as to say simply Satan came in and took the election. Folks, listen to me. I need you all to be careful. Don't listen to something that is contradictory to Scripture. If your Bible tells you it is God who sets up kings and takes them down, even in his wrath, in fact, that's an interesting Scripture, even according to, According to the Apostle Paul, who at the time of the writing, were, they, were be, oh, they were being oppressed by the Roman Empire, went so far as to say all authorities, all of them, are placed there by God. That's exactly right. And that is a point of the book of Jeremiah. When Jeremiah was called forth to prophesy against the false prophets who were telling the king, oh, no, Nebuchadnezzar's not going to take the... Okay, so Yah had anointed a wicked king, Nebuchadnezzar, called him my anointed. Same thing with Cyrus. Called him my anointed. And he was using him as an instrument of judgment to thresh the nation. The false prophet said, oh, no, king, that's not what God's saying. That's not what God's saying. If you go out, the battle is won. That's not what happened, folks. Yah's will was accomplished, and his word did come true, and he used the prophet Jeremiah to, to, to do that and to rebuke the false ones. It's happening again. And Paul is even referring to, again, at that time, the Roman Empire, who obviously were oppressing Israel. And yet Paul went so far as to say that, uh, folks, you are arguing with your Bible if you are thinking Satan got one in over on God, or as they are implying, Satan put the man in, the prophecy was correct, Trump really was elected, and yet today, folks, I would tell you, where is Trump? Be, be careful what you're hearing, folks. Be, be very cautious in what you're listening to. So, again, the question I'm going to ask you, what's going on with these people? I would ask you, what's changed? Have you noted what they have said since Biden took office? You're saying, you're prophesying Trump's coming back. Yes. Now, listen, yeah. listen very closely, folks. She said this in 2021. She's not talking about 2024. Just like with Kat Kerr and the other ones, Robin Bullock, Hank Kuhneman, he was doing the same thing. He was going to be in the office in this season that we're in now. This four years that, that Biden's been in office, that they were going to overturn the vote and put Trump back in. This woman is saying that in this interview. And, and Donna, are you saying he's coming back in 2024 or, 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 or sooner? Sooner. This video was recorded January 26th of 2022. It is called the reinstatement of the rightful president and a new inauguration. More, no more, my children. She's not talking about 2024, folks. A new inauguration in 2022. I am turning your morning into joy unspeakable in this hour. I am at work for you to destroy them for the freedoms that they have destroyed. And I'm bringing them back. Let me ask you this. You think Yah cares about your American freedoms over your salvation and over whether you are walking in righteousness? You think he cares about your freedom? Did he care about Israel's freedom in the ancient times when Nebuchadnezzar was about to take the city? He cared about the freedom? This is Christian nationalism, folks, and it's a cult. Look at the flag in the back. A federal flag, by the way. They will soon fill your streets and the sky. Heart's in the wrong place, y'all just said to me. Heart is in the wrong place. The reinstatement of your rightful president, the new inauguration that will take place this year. I'm going to read that again. A new inauguration will take place this year. The world will be watching as a rightful president takes back his po place of power and the puppet show is destroyed. It was God's perfect will to allow me to usher me into the future. That's right. He has ushered me into the future. 
and I took notes, I wrote it down, and the things I saw, I want to explain it to you, saints. I mean, God is a good God. And I went into some kind of portal, some kind of portal, and it was a real deal. All right, so this guy has gone into the future, sort of like Elijah, uh, excuse me, uh, Ezekiel. <clears throat> Y'all is taking him into the future, into the year 2022, and he said, who is the president? And Donald Trump's the president, right? Listen to what he says here. And I knew I was in Southern California, which I live in California. So apparently God used California. And I didn't know what year it was. So I saw a gentleman pass by me. And as he was passing by me, I had asked him, I said, sir, what year is this? And he looked at me crazy. He thought I looked like, he, I think he thought I was drunk. And I said, sir, please tell me what, what year is this? And he looked at me and he says, where have you been? I said, please tell me what year is this? He goes, man, it's 2022. Don't you know? It's 2022. And I go, wow. And then he started to walk away. And I asked him again. I know I was prompted by the Holy Spirit to do this. I said, sir, who is the president? Who is the president? And he said, don't you know? I said, I don't. Please tell me, who is the president? And he told me, he said, it's Donald Trump. Donald Trump is our president. And saints, get ready. I don't care how it looks now. Donald Trump is our next president. He will get a second term. So the, may, the way it looks, it may look like that. He's not winning. It may, may look like all this stuff. But God has plans for our president. He will be in that you will see him being inaugur inaugurated a second time, our president. And they're going to show that picture there on the screen. He will be inaugurated a second time. Donald Trump will be our president for a second term glory to god when it looked bad that all oh, this god must mean he'll get out of office and then he'll come back in in 2024 that's what people begin to surmise and what he means by this is when and we're talking about mark taylor hank kuhneman every single one of them who missed it right will double down and say, oh, no, we did. he's coming back. He'll have a second term. And they try to try to just scoop it over to uh, 2024. Some of them were even so bold to say, no, nah, he's coming back now, right? These, these are the doubling downs and the uh, damage control efforts that you see from these guys. But this one in particular is about to lie to you in your face and gaslight you all at the same time. But this, this you were not in 2024. That's right. I was in 2022. So, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm saying it right now live. Donald Trump will hold a second term, not 2024. Okay? Now he's going to gaslight you. Remember what he just said. And I listened to myself, so I know what I said. And it was really interesting because lots of people are saying, I prophesy that 45 will be back in, in 2022. That's exactly what he said, folks. But he deleted it off his channel, and he thought that Elijah Streams deleted it off their channel because they were deleting a lot of videos, but somebody captured it. And this guy is lying to your face and gaslighting you at the same time. He never said that. He never said that. Oh, yes, you did, brother. You did say that. And you said a lot more, too, that's been deleted. There's not one video that says that. Absolutely. One video does exist, and you are a confirmed liar. I will tell you what I prophesied under the anointing of God and what I never prophesied that people are saying. Never prophesied that. Never prophesied. They said you said that on Elijah's dream that you prophesied, oh, my gosh, that Trump will be back in 2022. Not there. I did not. I realize this is not going to be dragged out. I, I, I know there's a lot of uh, viewers are thinking 2024. No, absolutely. That was not God's plan. I came in in the time travel of 2022, and he did not say, oh, there was no mention of Biden. I'm going to make it very clear because we have to 
you know, we have to read the scriptures and we just can't read it one time and that's it. We have to continue to read the scriptures over and over to get in our system. There was no Biden administration in 2022. Glory to God. So as you saw in the last clip, he's saying that this clip doesn't exist, which is on Elijah streams because Elijah streams were hadn't hadn't deleted it yet. Right. And so he said, there's no none exists. Oh, yes, there is. And this is it <laughs> for the second time we are seeing him saying and, and doubling down. No Biden in 2022. Trump is going to be in there. Not 2024, 2022. That God had allowed me to go to 2022. Many times you can see the future, but you're not interacting. I interacted. I want you to understand that. I interacted. I touched. I feel. I talked to the people. I saw things. I saw things in the future that, that is not is not here now, but I, it's actually happening. You were there. Yes. You know, I, I went to a church service. Come on. You know, really? We're this was sooner, Lord, than what I thought. And I saw a, a parade downtown Washington, D.C. I saw a, a, a massive bunch of people in, in, in Washington. And then I saw a motorcade coming down through 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 the through Washington, Pennsylvania Avenue, around the, around the White House. And, and President Donald Trump was in the motorcade, and his power was restored. It's time for us to be encouraged. It's time for us preachers to stand and prophesy against the evil. Prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord, the Almighty God. God's bringing back the President of the United States, saith the Lord Almighty, because he's chosen to be, and a man cannot hinder it. Nothing can stop it, because he's an all-powerful God. And we're soon to see, in just a short little time, that God has chosen to be this way, to shake this globe, shake the world, and shake those that have not been shook. Just kidding. I, I really think in the next two months at most, uh, I've seen, I've seen uh, Donald Trump was back in power in August on the 40 day fast I went on. Uh, I don't understand everything. Uh, I do not understand everything. Make no mistake okay. about it. This man is telling you that Donald, and he was saying this sooner than the other ones. This was 2021 that Donald Trump was going to be reinstated in the office, overturn the election and put him back in the office. That's what he's saying. He's not saying 2024 folks. God shows me exactly. I believe in what God showed me. He may be saying 2024 now, but then he was not saying that. Most of them were, were, were saying this exact thing, that Donald Trump was going to be back in the office before 2024. I see President Trump walking down the hallway of the White House there. And this particular vision I was seeing where he was walking, he had at this point returned to the power of the president of the United States, and this was in August of this year. And, and the Lord spoke to me and told me, he said, I'm going to move in a way that no one has ever seen. But I was in great revival. I'll stop this evil that is in your White House, saith the Lord, because I've chosen this land. And it is I, saith the Almighty. That brings in the man that I choose to bring back in to be the king and the president of this land to be over a people that I have designed to be. For in the years past, I have told and foretold by my prophets and apostles and maidens, and they brought forth and prophesied of two terms. But yet you look out and you think that because man has made it look impossible, that it is impossible for me, but nothing is impossible for me, saith the Lord. You shall see that even in the days in the right near couple days, few days now, that it will cause, I'll cause this word to spring forth. So to follow up, this prophecy was from April 25th. It's very short. This part, it talks about can rivers flow once again in the deserts, talking about Arizona, that will bring truth to a nation. Can God cause from the, that desert place, things begin to blossom as truth brings forth, springs forth from the desert. For the forces of darkness are afraid because what was done in the desert will begin to heat up. The enemy is afraid. The people who know what they've done are sweating. But rivers shall flow that will cause other states to say, we shall do the same. It is arresting. Hallelujah. I saw how that today that, 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 that they're, they're going to they're Maricopa County. You can look for it. God's coming after you with a pair of handcuffs. Hallelujah. Because they rebelled against the word of the Lord. I saw it. Hallelujah. They refused to give over. They refused to, 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 to 
come up under subjection, they still gonna want to hide it, just like it was said in the very. You go back and listen to the first, very first dream about the judge standing up. It's I said it then. They'll rebel to the final end, and that's what they're gonna do, and that's why some of them's gonna end up going to jail over it. But God's gonna have His way. Hallelujah! How's He gonna do it? God's got somebody that's gonna stand up. That's above the Eternal General. God's got somebody that's above anybody that can stand up in this time and bring bring this about. Any judge, you know, there's a form that's got to be. There's a certain process that has to be to bring the 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 arrest and so forth about in the country. God's got somebody that's over it all. Hallelujah. It's going to fall like a tree. Saith the Lord God Almighty. It's going to fall like a big tree. All at once. Fast. Saith the Lord of hosts. And they'll be running. They'll be fleeing. They'll be running. Pelosi's going to run after get her an airplane. Better hurry. Because the Lord's coming after. The Lord is not going to suffer. He's not going to suffer it to be. Last week when I was on vacation, I was pressing God. I said, come on, we've got the midterm. Some, uh, you know, are saying it's not. Folks, I want you to notice Mario Marilla. Look how he's looking right there. And when this was going on, this man was a part of, of the, the, the prophets saying that Donald Trump was going to be in there. Right now, he's rethinking his life. You can see it in his face that he, does, he is not in agreement with Hank Kuhneman or any of them on the stage about that election and that's why he's doing what he's doing now look at him not gonna happen how many heard that come on raise your hand you've heard stuff out there i don't he's listen rethinking to the news his life tell me some are saying it's going to be delayed it's not going to happen some are saying that don't get your hopes up some are saying it's going to be a red wave and so i pressed god i said god what are you saying and he said to me, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 23. And he said, notice the verse 23 for 2023. He said, I am going to establish 2023. He said, I am setting the nations free. And then he said this, Deuteronomy 6, 23. Now here's what it says. It says in Deuteronomy 6, 23, I, God, brought them out. We have put our attention on Donald Trump. We have put our attentions on politicians. All of those things are important, but where is God? God wants to be the attention, and he brought Israel out. He is really about to interesting he says that. Very interesting, because this is the argument that Yah has. Yah first. But he, they, these guys have not done that. They put this nation first. They put Donald Trump first. And not only that, themselves first you i'm telling you bring this nation out of the harshness that we've been in the garbage that we've had to face then god said do you think they will take my nation from me no so here's what deuteronomy 6 23 says god brought them out to bring them in what is the word of the lord god is bringing us out to bring us in to what it then goes on and says to give us the land that he promised to give us america and what he promised to give us what we've prayed what we've prophesied what we have stood for this is what god is and he's taking that scripture out of context by the way y'all were speaking of the nation of israel not the united states matter of fact the united states is not mentioned in prophecy at all doing he's bringing us out to bring us in now lastly you asked the question midterms so i press god i said what are you saying and god said hank look at mario it's not about look at mario's face rethinking his he life. said it's about something that is on my calendar that i have aligned with the midterms i said what is it he said i have waited for this moment of the midterms on your calendar to do something on my events that shall be known as my terms and it shall also be known as a folks that's the look of a man with a with a with a heart that's being convicted in that moment mid-turn and then he said it will also be known as not only my terms midterms it will turn and i said what is going to happen god tell me what is coming and he said these words he said go and read exodus 14 in watch this verse 23 we're getting ready to head into 23. the egyptians were set up by god to come in to watch this the middle of the red sea where were they at a mid term and so god says i'm bringing all this together now 
I'm bringing all of these three things together. The right time and the blowing of the breath again and the reconstituting of a nation again. And I want to say to you, America is going to be reconstituted back yeah. to the purposes of God. The wind is about to blow. You hear me? The wind is about to blow. It is the right time. But I'm going to tell you, there's a deeper thing than that that's happening as well. There is a deep working in the soul of this nation where God says, I'm going to rewrite into the DNA of America that which I constituted her to be. And nothing is going to stop me. I need to say this to you. When they shot, when they showed the crowd there, and I told you earlier that y'all is going to be dealing with the false prophets and the false teachers and the false ones. I should have added also the ones that support them and don't hold them accountable are also going to be judged. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you've been working, actively working in supporting and pushing forward and exalting any one of these people, Y'all's going to, you, you will be judged in the same lot as them. You hear what I'm saying? This is very serious. I know I'm stepping on some toes, but I, I can't, I can't mind that. I have to be honest with you. I have to bring forth the word that y'all's given me. And I know it goes against the grain. And I know it looks like Jonathan's being foolish. He's out there on his own. I'm not on my own. I got the father. Steve is there. Mario's come along. Perry Stone sees what's happening. And there's others. You need to do the same thing. Which side are you going to be on? You're going to be on the side of the righteous or on the, on the side of the foolish? Come on! Have mercy, Father. Come on! Come on! I told you, my children, don't worry about the things that you see. Because the things that you see are temporary. What they are trying to do to your rightful president, that's a laughing matter. There will be no indictment. There will be no indictments. In 2023, four criminal indictments were filed against Trump. So there were indictments. Of my son. Not the way they wanted it to go. Oh, no, no, no. The indictments... Oh, yes, there will be indictments, I promise you. But it will be indictments for those one, the ones, excuse me, for the ones who are trying to make this indictment. Breaking news will be heard that will rattle the enemy's camp. Innocent, this ruling will be heard. Trump was found guilty on 34 felony counts. And she was prophesying right before this that he was not going to be found guilty. So once again, Julie Green face plants, but everybody sweeps it under the carpet. They still follow. She's still raking in the money from donations. Every single one of you going to be have the same lot as her if you support her. The case has fallen apart. Their latch dis lap last ditch effort did not work for President Trump. They cannot put him in jail now as the last indictment falls apart. We need to watch Ron DeSantis mm -hmm. because the Lord is going to use him in a powerful way. Mm -hmm. I had had several years ago a vision that I went into where I saw two palm trees and I saw one of them was planted in... You know, when you start seeing titles like this, red flag. In California the other one in Florida. And I said, Lord, who are, who, what is this, these two palm trees? He said, this palm tree from California is Ronald Reagan. This palm tree that is in Florida is Ron DeSantis. Mm -hmm. He said, Ron DeSantis or Ronald DeSantis mm -hmm. is the second, has an anointing similar to Ronald Reagan. And I saw uh, Ron DeSantis as a, as a tree of righteousness, that palm tree. And I saw it uprooted from Florida and brought to Washington, D.C. and planted 
in Washington, D.C. That's right. There's, there's something about Ron DeSantis that we need to begin to pray for, we need yes. to begin to look at, because his ultimate future is to have a position in the United States as the president and be planted in Washington, D.C., and he would be like a Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Again, another question. How does somebody, anybody, get him, get him, Steve. see things that apparently, uh, obviously, aren't correct, supposedly coming from God? How does somebody see something that isn't there? Come on, people. This doesn't take rocket science. I'm showing you, listen, I'm showing you things from people, not that they, they're saying. Great verse I, right there, you guys. Thus saith Yah Elohim, woe to the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. I believe this, or I feel, I feel, I feel that God's doing this. How long shall it be in, in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart. Or I'm convinced, or my convictions, or my heart says, that's different than, than seeing something, hearing something. Out have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination, whereas ye say, the Lord saith, albeit I have not spoken? Y'all's exposing these false prophets in this season right here. This is this is count two. He did it the last time. He's going to do it again, folks. That is the word. And just as I'm sitting here right now, Kamala Harris will be the next president. Or I will I will I will not search another code as long as I live. And I've said that to the Father. Father, if if I'm wrong about this, if I'm not hearing from you. And I believe I am. But if I'm not, I will no, never search another code. Out of body experiences, speaking under the unction, supposedly under the very unction of the Holy Spirit, saying, thus saith the Lord, blah. How does that work, folks? How does that work? Now, I know some of you having problems. Listen to me. I'm showing you, and I'm going to continue to show you things of what these people have said. Thank God time has transpired since I first spoke of some of these people because I took a lot of flack on some very, some of these people. And I got to ask you, these things aren't happening. What spirit are they listening to? Is it is it is it their own imagination? Is 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 it is it the Holy Spirit? Is God really that confused? Or perhaps maybe, perhaps just maybe, we're gullible. Perhaps we don't know what a prophet is. Listen to me, folks. Prophets. I've said this before. Prophets operate in all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it's necessary for their call. Mm. They, at times, will have to call upon, or the Holy Spirit will move for certain needs, depending on mm. what they are. And they all vary, but you need to read through the Bible and what the prophets did and the gifts that functioned. And yet, I would argue, listen to me, all of these people, I've said it before, they are prophesying to nations. And yet they are incapable of operating in any personal prophecy to anybody individually. And that's not how it works. My Bible tells me that the prophets that were to be prophets and operating in, in the tabernacle or the temple started from a young age being schooled. That's the way they grew up, being schooled by the elders. And that's the way God has always done it. When I started, now I've only told this story once, but when I started being used, you don't start out preaching. I mean, that's, that's kind of crazy. 
Do you want to be a preacher? You want to be exalted? You better learn to be humble. It's that's the way it works, and God will school you. So I was when I was a teenager, I said, What can I do? I want, you know, let me do something. I have to do something. As unto the Lord, just give me something to do. And I, you start out with cleaning the bathrooms, or at least something I started out with that. You know, enjoy cleaning the trash and the toilets. You know, you want you want to do whatever. You you can move maybe on into do, do, greeting, door greeting. Then you get to if you need you want, give me something more. Hey, I'll take anything. Just let me do something more for God. Because it's burning in here. You have to do something for God. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I'll take let me take offerings. You know, they'll offer it to you if, if and that's how you get schooled. You know, the sound system, I remember I had, the next thing I was, I was in charge of the sound system after the offerings. The sound, sound's important. Mike's got to work, people got to sing, everything's got to be functioning, all this stuff. Turning on the lights, you know, opening the church, closing the church. All that stuff I had to start doing. Eventually, if, if you're faithful with that, you can start singing when it's time, time to, to for worship. You might eventually even be able to lead in songs. And if you learn how the Spirit's working, you learn then people begin to see. You might get to teach, you might get to preach, but you don't get to preach if you're not schooled in the Word. And there's so many people that don't even read the Bible who are only getting their preaching through YouTube and they don't know the first thing about the Word of God. I'm just telling you that you'd be surprised of who's on YouTube, folks. So that, and that's how, and that's how you start. You wind up, and, and then you you can become an elder. God's moving you that way. People begin to respect you. The gifts begin to function. You start out the same way. You don't prophesy to the world. You prophesy to somebody individual. You get a word of knowledge. You see a sickness. You can call them out. If you're in charge of the service, it's real simple how that works. That's That's the way God works, folks. Now, again, I'm going to show you what somebody else said. But one of the names we need to name is Kat Kerr. Apparently, she's got a huge following giving these visions about heaven. All right. So now, is now, now this, is, this is more recent. This is one when the man's finally listened to, to the conviction of his heart. Remember, he was sitting on the stage look, looking down, listening to, the, to these prophets prophesy lies. His heart was convicted. Y'all pulled him out of there. And he said, I want you to stand up against it. And that's what he's done. He's repented. And he's calling them out. And I'm proud of that. Because the main one, the one that he's about to call out is a witch, folks. And the codes, the codes actually says Cat Kerr, uh, the, the witchcraft of Cat Kerr. Now, the probability of that being an accident or a random occurrence in the Bible is nil. It is nil. You understand what I'm telling you? Every single one of them been confirmed by the codes to be false. All those all those pro, uh, uh, scriptures that we just seen at the bottom of the screen talking about false prophets from Isaiah, Jeremiah, and, and uh, Ezekiel, all three called them out. All those scriptures comes into the access term of their name. It does. Not just giving visions about heaven, but again, um, it, by the way, the woman he's talking about, this is the one that goes to heaven and plays checkers with Jesus. Yet Yeshua never reveals his name to her. Come on. And in, in a very real sense, acting as a spiritist, that that she's almost mediating between people that have gone on to be with Jesus that she runs into while she's in heaven. Now, here's what she saw in heaven. Entire mountains made out of jello. There's a whole place called Jello Land in heaven. It really does exist. There's houses made out of candy. They're made out of all kinds of things. I know there's chocolate waterfalls. Folks, look at what's on her shirt. Look at what she's got on her shirt. It's Santa Claus, a fictional character. Santa Claus. Probably would be a part of that mansion made out of candy. Uh, you can just go jump out in the waterfall and drink the chocolate or swim in the chocolate. She saw cows driving tractors. And the cows drive the tractors. This is heaven. Okay. 
They have. They also have the flower concerts where the flowers all come together and sing. She said that Christopher Reeve is giving people flying. Folks, if you don't know who Christopher Reeve is and you're you're not born in, in my generation, Christopher Reeve was the Superman of my time in, in the movies. OK, so so he's passed away. And remember, he, he fell off a horse and was paralyzed many years before he died. But now he's in heaven giving flying lessons. To the people there. Flying lessons and Elvis is in a small cabin uh, singing songs to Jesus, giving him private concert. She saw Michael Jackson in heaven. I've seen Michael Jackson, and I'm probably going to get bashed for that. It doesn't hurt me or bother me because I saw him, and he yeah. was worshiping Jesus Christ. And whether you know it or not, anyone out there, I can tell you, he was pursuing Christ in those last days. He was going to do his final tour. Now, I didn't follow him or anything like that. This is just things that Jesus showed me. She also says very clearly that that in heaven there are roller coasters and children can ride t-rexes dinosaurs there are places in heaven they can go that is for a play area that yes you can actually change you can be smaller you can be larger uh i think that you can become a cartoon in certain areas and then you play out cartoons with your friends you actually are in the cartoon you can travel different ways like in bubbles um uh, you can go up to uh, different places for the, the play places in the sky. Uh, you can visit rodeos, all kinds of things, dinosaur park. I know people get up, get off on that. And so, yes, there is uh, not just in line. Again, with the Christian nationalism, you see the draped, literally dressed in the American flag. I'm skating and not just well, hearts in the wrong the place. Well, rings people who are Christians who ran one because that was their gift. They will do, they'll be doing that in heaven. Uh, but there is extreme sports in heaven, like skateboarding, like... On and by the way, I love this country just like anybody else. I served in the Marine Corps. I know what it is to be a patriot. This is overboard, folks. Heart in the wrong place. These 100-foot loops and jumps uh, on your skateboards, and some of them can fly. The skateboards fly. You wow. control them while you're flying on them and do all kinds of different uh, tricks and stuff there in heaven. And, and what I want to address is not her for a moment, but her followers. And I want to look at you. Uh, you've gotten mad and you need to examine why you got mad. And you say, well, Mario, why couldn't there be dinosaurs in heaven? And why couldn't Christopher Reeves do that? And she also said, the father is of course our father. And the reason he says that is because you lived inside of him literally before you were here on the earth and he sent you here. And the reason he sent you was so you can actually have a physical body. In heaven, you are a little spiritual being, maybe about this big. See if I can get that to see. See if I can get, anyway, let's move that over here. I'm not very good at it. There you go. <laughs> You're about a little tiny spiritual being. That's what you were, that was your spirit. It wasn't anybody else, that was you. You lived inside the father. That's where you've always been. And we've been with him from the beginning. And actually, you saw things. Eventually, in heaven, you'll probably remember some of the things you saw before the earth was made. You still were in him. There's Santa Claus is in heaven. Now, we're talking about, and hide the children. We're talking about a mythical person, uh, Santa Claus, that she says exists in heaven. So somebody that isn't even real is in heaven. In Christmas town, when you go there, that is where Nicholas lives. Christmas town, folks. So there's a Christmas town, just like in, uh, you know, Maggie Valley. Your Christmas town in Maggie Valley. I just went through uh, a few days ago, coming to Sukkot, where everything is decorated in Christmas. Apparently, Santa Claus has a Christmas town in heaven. D d does that sound biblical to you? Use discernment now. Yes, Nick. Some people call him Saint Nick. Some people call him Santa, call him whatever. His actual name is Nicholas. Again, I'm saying this is a soul winner, a broken hearted soul winner. This woman is making this stuff up and you need to know it because it's going to hurt you. She needs to repent because it's hurting her. One that I love that why one of the best ones I had to save for you folks, just so I want you to know, Santa Claus. In Christmas Town, St. Nick, an imaginary 
fictional character that does is not even real is in heaven. Folks, cows are not on a tractor farmland in heaven. That is, that is, that is, a, I don't even know why farmland in heaven needs to even be irrigated, much less via a man-made tractor with a cow driving it. So I'm sorry that, that some of you, she's, she seems sweet, but she needs help. Don't get mad at me because she shares this platform and I'm trying to enlighten you folks. The name that we need to mention is Robin Bullock, who I believe is leading a cult-like church in Warrior, Alabama. And he's dangerous. And I'm going to say it straight out. Because now, apparently in heaven, there's always room for Jello, Because he has a feature of God the Father living in a cubicle that is covered with gelatin. And it's done to insulate the rest of the universe from being destroyed by his power. I've been to heaven in different throne rooms uh, a few times. And, and every time I was in a throne room, he has different throne rooms for different things. I watched him create the world one time. Wow. It was the most amazing thing you've ever seen. And when you got to the end of it, but the white throne, it's set up on about seven tiers. And... And when you look down at it, it was massive. It was a massive thing. And it was inside this cube of like uh, gelatin. It was like clear gelatin. And it went around in a square around him and his whole throne. You could see his hair. You could see the outline of it inside that. And his beard. He's watching all of this. And his eyes full of fire and he's just watching and inside this cube of gelatin it was clear like it was pure energy it was power it was just like electricity alive inside this cube when you see him like that it, that cube had to be around him there was too much power coming out of him it had to be there okay again I'm not going to answer that that's not that's not real. If you believe that, you need help because that is impossible, it's ridiculous, and it's not happening. And ask yourself, why would I listen to a Julie Green or a Robin Bullock who predicted things that did not happen, blazingly did not happen, and they never repented it or publicly held themselves accountable for what they said would happen and didn't? But we have people out there that are claiming to be a part of God's army is going to get hard. Claiming to be a part of God's army and they're subordinate. They're subordinate. I mean, and that's bad enough. They're incapable. Some of you are incapable of submitting, which is why I can tell you that's one of the first lessons I learned. Again, you, you know, if you want to be exalted, you better learn how to be humble. This is the way it goes, folks. That's just the way it goes. But we have what's even worse today in the body because we can't tell the difference. We don't know the difference of what a real prophet is. We don't. Person says they're a prophet, therefore they're a prophet. And all they have done is they found a uniform and got dressed up in it. They're posing as a colonel or a general, running around, barking orders. Oh, you hear me. You you hear me just because you're acting like a colonel or a general running around saying thus saith the lord as if the commander in chief told you to say this <laughs> you're an officer impersonator is what you are you know what would happen if you impersonated an officer a couple hundred years ago hundred years ago during a time of war this these days all you do is you just wind up in the brig you wind up in military or federal prison Bad enough. I mean, bad enough. However, at a time of war, 100 years ago or so, you would have been shot. 
flat out, you would have been shot. You think it's no big deal, folks. This, this, uh, what's the big deal? So, but, so what if so-and-so really isn't a prophet? And not just a prophet. It, impersonating somebody or something that you're not. Jesus talks about in Revelation how, he, how Jews that are, say they're Jews and are not. He hates them. The Apostle Paul talks about, about impersonating apostles, transforming themselves into the apostles of light, transforming themselves into apostles, and they're not. That's living a lie. And you think it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, it matters. If you were running around barking orders that never came from the commander-in-chief, it is so detrimental, it's not even ridiculous. You know what happened? Let me get, when it used to happen, and this had happened, if you, if you do your research, there would be messengers that would get orders from the higher-ups. They'd get on their horse, and they'd, they'd run, you know, until they got to, to, out to the front lines, and they here's the orders, and here's what you're supposed to do. You know what the enemy would do at times? They'd kill the enemy. They'd grab their enemy's uniform, put it on, slap it on, make fake orders. Fake orders. Go out to the camp, their enemy's camp, saying, here's what you're supposed to do, and it never came from the higher-ups. And many times it was discovered that the person was an imposter. You know what happened? There was no question. You shot, you killed the enemy because you were being fed information from the enemy. And you think this is all, this is all nonsense. This doesn't happen today. All this happens today. This is happening right now. By the millions of people are listening to things that are actually wrong. Millions. And I know this doesn't make any sense. He said, well, how in the world is that possible? Do you know this is some of the basic fundamentals that ch the church used to fight over now just has, has increased vastly to the point, Sonny, I can't even go into the various areas that we have gone off into. Everybody has their own belief, making a mockery of the church and the, high, and the people that are intended to teach and preach. It's a mockery. We don't know anything anymore. We can't tell because it's behind a camera. Just the basic fundamentals, folks. Preachers preaching, teaching, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. And we got some, some no trip. Some just, there's not even a rapture for that matter. In some cases, who are you listening to? And they say, what's the big deal? <laughs> it's a big deal. I mean, I don't know. Are you thinking there's going to be a pre-trib or are you thinking there's going to be a post-trib? It kind of depends because depending on what's really going to happen, unless you think there's going to be all these multiple raptures too, you don't know who you're listening to. Or what are you, are you ducking? Or are you getting ready to, are you looking up? <laughs> right? Are you looking up? I don't have to prepare. Jesus is coming any minute, and many, many people, in fact, the majority of the church think that way. And yet, what have we been experiencing? It's just getting worse and worse and worse. But it doesn't matter if, if you believe we're out of here. You're not going to hunker down. You're not going to prep. You're not going to do anything. You know, three years or seven years or no year. Folks, by the way, all these, uh, all these scriptures that are popping up at the bottom, talking about false prophets, these are the very same ones that, that are in the table of the false prophets. Kat Kerr, Hank Kuhneman, Robin Bullock, Julie Green, Amanda Grace. I know you're going to get mad, but the truth is the truth. It's a fact. Their name is encoded in the false prophet, where the scriptures talk about false prophets. That's not an accident, folks. What are you doing? Do you see? Do you see how that's harmful? We got other people. That's that's just scratching the surface. Because I'm telling you, there are promises people are going to begin to look for, and according to the Bible, we're apparently going to be having people saying, "Where's the promise of His coming?" Haven't things continued on since they were since the beginning? Where is the promise of His coming? People are going to begin to fall away, according to Paul. Second Thessalonians, that's according, according to Paul, there's going to come a falling away first. And then eventually the man of sin gets revealed, but though he's being restrained. 
So while he's being restrained, first, there's a falling away. Haven't you put two and two together? They're falling away because he's not being revealed yet. What's the big deal? Well, everybody's anticipating according to the opening of the seven-year period. We're going to see the, we're going to see the Antichrist, the seven-year peace treaty, all this other stuff, folks. This is, this is, this is the kind of mis disinformation that's going to confuse the church. And we have people impersonating officers, and I'm going to tell you it's wrong, wrong, wrong. God is going to clean up his house. And some of it's starting, it's already starting. We're already watching it. Let me tell you something else. Absolutely. It is. And that's what I'm talking about. He's going to clean up his house. Now, now I've had several of you, you know, message me and say, well, Jonathan, God spared Donald Trump's life not once, but twice. Doesn't this mean he's going to be in? He's got to be saving him for a reason. I'm, let me let me just reveal something to you right now. Yah is first of all because of the code we put out six years ago, indicating Donald Trump was somebody's going to try to kill him. People been praying for Donald Trump, and Yah has spared him. But he's going to use that with these false prophets because they are looking at that as an indicator that Donald Trump's coming back. And so that's where their lying spirit comes through because they don't understand the nature of Yah and what he is doing. But he's going to use that to expose them. Many of them are doubling down and there's some new ones that are coming on board. Even some new ones saying, I heard a word from the Lord and he told me Donald Trump was going to be reign over this nation. He's exposing even the new ones. But, but mostly the ones that have doubled down, that did not repent the last time this happened. This is the second blow. The second blow. Folks, have you ever read Zechariah 13 and asked yourself why y'all put that there? We're going to read that in just a minute. But think about it. Talking about false prophets. And what's going to happen to them in the end days. They get it so wrong. So wrong in the end days that their own parents threaten them with death if they speak lies in the Father's name and prophesy. Their own parents threaten to kill them speaking lies. Now, now something must have happened that caused that. What do you think it is? YouTube prophets, maybe? Destroying the credibility of the office? Maybe it's bad, just as bad. It's along the same lines. We're, again, we're in the army of God. There, do you know there are? We learned recently with Waltz that apparently, I don't know if somebody even knew these these actual charges, but it's but it's true. It's called stolen valor. Saying you you you're in the army or we're in the army and basically what you're doing is you're taking credit for something you never did. Oh man, some of you are going to want to run. Stolen valor, taking credit for something you never did, something that. It's not yours that you never, yeah. He said, well, not, 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 not yours, yes. Do you, let me show you kind of what that's like. I mean, they, you could even put on medals and act like you're in the army and put it on your medal. You say, look, and it was not your medal. You never did that. You never earned that. Let me show you something, folks. If this were a gift of the Holy Spirit, it could be anything. And the Holy Spirit says, here, Steve, or here, anybody anybody some of you are to get nervous and to come along and you say it's mine and then you go over to your own channel your own ministry and i have plenty of ministries and you go like this on your channel you said look, look look what i got <laughs> look it's mine look at this is this is mine don't you think it's cool that's stolen folks 
you've taken something that the Holy Spirit put here and you smacked it on your chest. It's stolen valor. It's content stolen that the whole Holy Spirit never gave you. Now, I know I've talked about this before. I said there's gleaners, gleaners. I've told you there are, there are television ministries that watch this channel. And I'm not just talking about me. And I, I think it's not even so much that even about me. Forget me, though I've dealt with it. I mean, there are, there are ministries that watch this channel, tens of thousands, 100,001, 300,001, 800,001, a million Plus, one subscriber who doesn't even have even a dog in the fight. He's not even a minister. Who I talked recently, and, and you know, he's bought the book and called me. And I, all I asked that you're going to be watching, you've taken my content that the Holy Spirit put here that I never said you could take, and you've taken it verbatim and used it on your channel and passed it off as your own. And according to the comments, great job. I tell you, put a lot of effort into your messages. You receive pats on the back for content, that, for stuff that the Holy Spirit never gave you, and I never approved. Let's be really clear on what he's saying. He's not talking about me mirroring his content with him speaking in it. He's talking about people that would take his, his words, take his content, and reprocess that and present it as their own. That's not what's happening right now. I'm mirroring this brother. Because I'm in lockstep with him. He's absolutely right. And y'all's put this burden on him just like you put it on me. Because there's nobody out there, folks. That you, search around. The, even this video that I'm about to put out on that, we're using his, his words and his, his face, is not going to get a million views like Julie Green and Hank Kuhneman and some of the others because we're not tickling ears. And we're not sugarcoating anything. And it's a hard word. Nobody wants to hear it. But the day's coming, folks, where you're going to see what I've told you and what this man has told you, what Perry Stone has told you, is going to be fulfilled. For you to pass these messages off as your own. And yet you've taken the theme that's here, and now you're selling food buckets and everything else. I'm not going to say who this person is, folks. I'm just telling you, I've dealt with several levels of people. And I, and I know some of you don't believe. Yeah, guy bought the book, called me, and I told him. Me, I said, what would, be like, what would it be like if somebody stole your content, passed it off as their own? It's stolen valor. And many ministries do that, not just here. They do it in other places. They go around gleaning. And look what I got. And you get the pat on the back and you say, I job well done. And, and you walk off as if you did it yourself. It's fake. It's not right. God knows who he's given the information to. I would admonish you, stop stealing other people's, not, I'm not necessarily talking about, but it happens, folks. It happens. And if we go back on, on the TV, let me just uh, parry to, to what he's saying, because the false prophets seem to do that with one another. One will give a prophecy and the other will, will bring a same word, and then they will both use that to say, this, it, this is the witness, right? And they're basically, uh, you know, echo chambering each other, if you will, and they're both wrong. I've seen this happen over and over again. You know, Kat Kerr talking about gelatin in heaven and Robin Bullock coming right back behind her and saying God's encased in gelatin. Right? By the ending of the year, I think it looks like it. I am going to need your prayers. And, and let me just warn you right now, before we get to the end of, of his presentation, and we're coming on that, it's less than 18 minutes left of that. He's going to drill down on some, one, of the, one of the main ones that started it all back in the day, who's no longer with us, and he's going to show you the words that that man did. Listen, some of these prophets say so much, literally say so much, it's like taking a shot in the dark. Eventually, you will hit something. If you're shooting a gun randomly in the dark, eventually, you will hit something. And that's what some of these prophecies are like. For the most part, 99.99999% is wrong, but then you got that one bullet that actually hits something. And that's what people focus on. 
Folks, if an airline pilot only landed less than 1% of the time, would you fly on that aircraft? Why are you following people who are only right less than 1% of the time? Folks, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Is that a worthy clock to follow? There's a lot, you would not believe what goes on. And, it, and it's, it's, it's sad what, what goes on, folks. Kim Clement, I've received a lot of, a lot of you. Here it comes. Brace yourself, because I know a lot of you like this guy, Ken Clement. And I think it's sad that, that his followers and even his, his wife, or is it his daughter, that keep putting his information out as if he's here. You're exploiting a dead man. And by the way, the Trump prophecies that he prophesied years and years and years ago, you, do you realize that Trump ran for president like five times? He dropped out most of the time. Cam Clement's prophecies about Trump being president was that season that he was prophesying in, and Trump dropped out. Clock, a broken clock is right twice a day. Eventually, it'll have the right time if you wait long enough. You watch Kim Clement and what he said about Listen to what Trump. he says. Let me show you first off what Kim Clement's prophecies have been This is just a little handful of what Kim Clement has said years ago. But I will, I will clear the debt of this place. I will remove every cent that is owed. And I will prove myself as the great Jehovah. Talking about the economy. He's talking about the two trillion dollars. Well, at that time it wasn't two trillion dollars, but he's talking about the trillions of dollars that we are in debt. It's going to be clear. Did that happen? Did did that happen? Oh, it's not happened yet. It's not. You think it's going to happen under uh, uh, Trump or who? Because Trump's not coming back, folks. Who's this going to happen under? said Hillary Clinton some of you shouted out yes God said I've already dealt with her heart listen to what this man said in 2014 remember this is before 2016 folks when she ran for president listen very closely to what she he says about one of the most wicked women in this nation listen to what he says not to be president of this nation but to be president in a Christian world, she will have a testimony second to none and will eventually come out with it. So apparently, Hillary Clinton was slated to be a sold out, born again, baptized in the spirit Christian who was going to be leading the Christian church. And make declaration that Christ Jesus saved her marriage, saved a child, and saved her life. Folks, there's been a lot of evidence over the years that's come out since this that indicates that Hillary Clinton and her daughter are in the, the occult, deep in the occult. Have you seen Jesus Christ save her life and save her daughter's life and, and, and save her marriage? And when this happens, there will be a shaking in the Democratic Party so powerful. Listen to the word of the Lord. And men shall despise them. And they shall attempt to assassinate President Obama. For there are three groups that have already planned it. And I will... They will attempt to assassinate President Obama. I I've never seen that. 
However, I told you six years ago that the codes indicated somebody was going to try to kill Trump. And then up to about five months ago when I redid that broadcast, I told you it was highly probable it was going to be a, a shooting. Okay. Where's the assassination attempt on Obama? Protect him, says the Lord, for they will say, we want this African-American to bring shame so that there will never be another African-American prison again. God said, I will prove them wrong, for there shall be a baptism of the Holy Spirit that shall take place in his life in the summer of this year. And God said it shall be in the summer of this year. So he said this January 15, 2010. OK, remember, Obama's president this time. And that he was going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Folks, a broken clock is right twice a day. Are you going to follow that clock all day long? And depend on that clock all day long. It's only right twice a day because it's broken. Or taking a shot in the dark with so many bullets that eventually you hit something. Right? So it doesn't matter that Kim Clement was right here and there, folks. A track record over a period of time establishes a prophet. Not, you know, picking and choosing when you want to say he was correct. Do you understand what I'm saying? And furthermore, the man started his ministry, uh, was in Detroit, when it was thriving with industry and cars are being produced. He left that city in worse condition ever. That city is no more. It's destroyed. There is no heartland uh, or, or motor city where thousands of people are building cars. It's gone. And where did he go from there? When, destro when Detroit was destroyed, he went into the heart of Reseda, California, where most of the porn in, is made in the United States in Reseda. That's where his headquarters was. Did the porn industry collapse? No, it, it got even worse, folks. We lead the world in export of pornography. And by the way, this man passed away with brain cancer. I, I, I don't know of any prophets in the Bible that died of natural causes. They were all murdered because they brought truth. That the politics of this country shall be changed as a result of it. Says the Lord. Come on. And in 2018, at the celebration of Israel's birthday, there shall be an outpouring of my spirit in Israel, like it has not had since the days of David and the days of Jesus. You listen to me, everybody. But I have prepared my Holy Spirit who is part of our Godhead, our Trinity, to bring upon the earth and especially America, Canada, France, the Netherlands, Germany, and many others. Folks, in every one of those places, things have gotten worse. Do you know what they're doing in France, where they just had the Olympics? It is all out Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you know what they're doing in Germany? Do you see what they're doing in Canada, America, even Australia? Where's the revival? Yah is doing exactly the opposite of what these people say. So that you will see. Do you have the strength and the courage to come forward and call it out? Or are you just going to be complacent? You're going to keep supporting them? You're still going to share the videos because God's going to hold you accountable for the things that you do as well as what I do. Are you going to stand in their lot on judgment day and be judged with them or witness to the judgment? 
It's your choice, by the way. A move of the Holy Spirit that will creep over into the streets of the Middle East and there shall be Damascus Road conversions take place in the highest places in terrorist organizations. And they shall come out and they shall reveal the truth and the evil of Islam. And there shall be a shaking in the kingdom. And the way that I shook in 1900, at the turn of the century, 1948, in the 60s and the 70s, I will accumulate them all in one. Come on. And I shall pour of my spirit with a global renewal says the lord trying to enlighten some of you who listen to these people and you're continually dealing with me on saying well so and so said my argument again is simple how could these people be hearing from the holy spirit if these things that they're saying aren't happening when it comes to claim clement clearly Without walls was his church. Some of you may not even know that. He was referring to his, his various buildings that he had and his church. That it would be paid off by 2012. It didn't happen. It, it, it was in debt at his passing still. How do you rectify that as being the Holy Spirit, even though apparently the Holy Spirit was speaking through the man? Come on, folks. This isn't, it's, again, it's not rocket science. Did Hillary Clinton... I believe the prophecy that one was, was that 2010 one? Doesn't matter, whatever. Did she get baptized in the Holy Spirit? I don't, I didn't see Hillary Clinton get baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry. I don't remember in 2010 Obama getting baptized. That, that so much so that the politics of the Democratic Party would change. Now that's a mouthful. Kim Clement's even later prophecies, I showed you one, to where apparently Israel in 2018, I missed this one, I'm sorry, I missed it, I missed it, God, I missed it, I didn't see revival hit via the Holy Spirit, comparative on Israel to the times of David and Jesus, I missed that one, I'm not trying, to, I'm just saying I missed it, folks, I'm being realistic with you now, some of you have been talking about Trump, Trump's going to be, and he said two terms. Listen to me, folks. What I understand on all the information, I have that information on all the Trump, supposed Trump prophecies. How can he be missing it so badly? And then this portion is correct. Let me show you a popular Trump prophecy. Let me give you the beginning of it and the ending of it. This that shall take place shall be the most unusual thing, a transfiguration and going into the marketplace, if you wish, into the news media. And, and by the way, I, I believe 2008, 2009 is coming up on the election year. Um, Trump was running for president against Obama and dropped out very early. Uh, before the primaries, folks, um, you know, when he was polling in, in, in 5%, 10%, things like that, he dropped out. He did not become president. When Time Magazine will have no choice but to say what I want them to say. Newsweek, what I want to say. The View, what I want to say. Trump shall become a trumpet, says the Lord. Trump shall become a trumpet. I will raise up the Trump to become a trumpet, and Bill Gates to open up the gate of a financial realm for the church, says... All right, so so have we seen Bill Gates do that? And by the way, let me parry on what he's about to say. Bill Gates gave you the vaccine, right? He was the one that... Or, remember, he was, he was on TED Talks talking about disease X for five years before COVID, okay? He was the one pushing the, the, the vaccine. Donald Trump was the one that did the warp speed for the vaccine. Just to remind you of what happened. The beginning of the prophecy, it's all one prophecy. 
there is going to be a transfiguration in the news media. If there has been, I've missed it. If there's anything that's been transfigured in the news media, it's, it's got worse. worse. Newsweek does not say what God wants to say. I've missed it. You think the view does? Same thing with the view. I, I, I'm sorry. I think hell is speaking through the view right now. That's just my take. No, you got discernment, brother. Uh, I'm sorry. You got discernment. That's the beginning of it. The middle, we got Trump being a trumpet. Then the latter part of it, Bill Gates is going to open the financial gates. Has that happened, church. folks? My wife that. laughed at that. Just saying. So what do you do with it? Well, it's a true prophecy. How do you say that's a true prophecy? Because that's the only point to where he names the only prophecy out there from Kim Clement that names who this person will be, and supposedly it's going to be Trump. Every other prophecy, and I have them all, from where he's mentioning who this president's going to be, brings in other information, not Trump, but there'll be two terms. Let me give you, let me give you some of those prophecies. Listen to what this David, this president's supposed to be. Amongst them stood one that God had set aside to be the leader of this nation. I said, why am I hearing this so soon? Surely you would show me a little bit of it closer to the time. And the Spirit of God made me look at him and he said, this man will throttle the enemies of Israel. This man will throttle the enemies of the West. And there are highly embarrassing moments that are about to occur for many, many politicians in this nation. There will be a shaking amongst... There will be a shaking amongst the de Democrats in the upcoming elections, but unsettling for the Republicans. Why is, why is God doing this? For God said, I am dissatisfied with what emerges from both parties. And then there is a nation he showed me, took me, itching for a new kind of war with America. They will shout, impeach, impeach, they say. But nay. This nation shall come very subtly. But he shall not come in the time of President Obama. They shall come when this new one arises, my David, that I have set aside for this nation. A man of prayer, a man of choice words, not a man who is verbose, who has verbosity, who speaks too much. They will even say, this man is not speaking enough. But God says, I have set him aside. They will shout, impeach, impeach. But this shall not happen. And then God says, highly embarrassing moments when another Snowden arises. This again is supposed to be the David. Folks, listen to me one thing. David was small, according to the Bible. He, Trump is 6'3". I see no other qualifications that Trump had to David or is even comparable to David. A man of prayer? I don't know where we get that, yet Kim Clement said that's what it is. Now, I guess we could argue that back and forth. I'm not going to waste my time on that. Why? Because the other aspects don't make any sense. We can't be speaking of Trump, this David. They're going to cry impeach, impeach, but it's not going to happen. Trump was impeached more than any president there has ever been. Of course, it turned out to be two times. Of course, now he's dealing with indictments. 
Was that the Holy Spirit? Trump's, Trump has been impeached. This, you, goes so you to, can't... this goes to what I told you that Yaz told me that he's going to do. Exactly the opposite of what these prophets say Yaz going to do. Kim Clem said, impeach, impeach, and he would not be impeached. And what does Yaz say? It is so. He's going to turn every word back on them and do exactly the opposite of what they say. That's how you know who's going to win the election, folks. If you follow in these prophets, the exact opposite of what they say. So be selective. Trump is speaks too much. And yet he said the news media is going to say he doesn't speak enough. Anybody who knows Trump knows the man speaks way too much. Unlike anybody that's ever, no, that's that's one of the arguments about the man. He talks too much. He puts his foot in his mouth. Sometimes he's not saying the correct things, and I'm not going to go there with that, but I'm just going to tell you that's what surrounds the man and the thinking of the man. He talks too much. So how do you say this is Trump or that this is the Lord? I don't get it, folks. Yet you will tell me he's going to have two terms, hours of prophecy, Regarding the two terms, be a praying president, not a religious one, but I will fool the people, says the Lord. I will fool the people. Yes, I will. God says, the one that is chosen shall go in and they shall say he has hot blood. For the Spirit of God says, yes, he may have hot blood, but he will bring the walls of protection on this country in a greater way, and the economy of this country shall change rapidly, says the Lord of hosts. Listen to the word of the Lord. God says, I will put at your helm for two terms. A president that will pray, but he will not be a praying president when he starts. I will put him in office, and then I will baptize him with the Holy Spirit and my power, says the Lord of hosts. Come on! You are to test the spirits. What are we dealing with when people are saying these things and they are not happening? Who are we listening to? Now, you can say all you'd like what you think is going to happen. But I want you to know what these people have been saying. And I would like to ask you just to resolve it for me here. Tell me down below, how come are they correct now? How do you say that these things are saying are now correct? Obviously, November isn't here yet. Obviously, we haven't got to see America restored yet. I would also get to argue, I mean, what, you know, if we're in the end, how come are we looking for America to be restored and all these other, and I don't know what to think with these people, but if they're sharing the same platform and I'm having to debate them, let me show you something that I said back in 2018 that I've been giving you clips of, simple clips of a main message, of a segment of the message. During the Trump administration, she's gonna get even exactly what she wants. You that don't like America, you that don't honor your flag, you want to burn it, you hate it, don't want to bow the knee to it, you, do, you don't respect the land you live in, God's going to give you exactly what you want. Don't like America? There's not going to be an America. God's going to destroy Babylon. There's not going to be an America. And you're going to get exactly what you want. You want all you that want open borders? You want just everybody just come on in? Everybody just, everybody, anybody just come on in. He's obviously talking about the left, folks, uh, at, at that point. If you would, please go over to uh, Steve's channel and subscribe to him. You guys, if you would. At Cochrane Ministries, please do that and follow this brother. Um, tell him I sent you. Um, before I close this out, let me let me see if I got it queued up here. Mm -hmm. No, I do not. Hang tight. I want to read one scripture to you before I close out this video, folks. And then the next time you see me, we're going to be talking about some codes. I promise you. I want to go to Zechariah 
Zechariah, not Zephaniah. Zechariah chapter 13. And uh, excuse me, is it Zechariah? I want mean Zephaniah still. I should have had this queued up already. Here we go. In that day, there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and uncleanness. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yah, Zavahut, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and, I will, and they will no more be remembered. And I will also cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. And it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that begat him shall say unto them, Thou shalt not live, but thou speakest lies in the name of Yah. And his mother and father that begot him shall thrust him through, that means with a sword, when he prophesies. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets that are, uh, that the prophets shall be ashamed every one of his vision. And I submit to you folks right now, that's what's about to happen. There's coming a day where these same ones are going to be ashamed of the things they've said. Now, I, I submit they already are. That's why they deleted so many of the prophecies, millions of views off these channels. So you couldn't see them because they are ashamed. Why would you delete it unless you were ashamed? And we ha when he hath prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive, but say, I am no prophet. That's what they're going to do. Folks, that's what I got for you in this video. I know it was a hard message, and I may lose a few of you because of it, but I still love you, and I pray for you. I'm not mad at you. Uh, I just want you to see the truth. I want you to see the truth that we, our heart's in the wrong place as a nation. And we're following after men with deceiving spirits in their mouth. And they're telling you lies and you're eating it up. And Yah's coming back to deal with that in this next election cycle. I don't mean literally going to touch down on this earth. I mean, you know what I mean. His hand is moving in this. I'll be leaving uh, Tennessee, going back home very soon, folks, and be back in the saddle, uh, putting out more content. I'll have codes for you in the next video. Shalom to you. May Yah bless and keep you. He loves you. He sent his son to die for you. And that's why he will send somebody to tell you the truth. Shalom.